and welcome to a spooky diamond painting video. Today we will be diamond painting and telling creepypasta stories. None of these stories were by me. I will be giving credits in the video and in the description below. But let's get into our first creepy story. Also, I apologize if you hear light sounds of traffic around me. I am near some traffic. I apologize about that. I cannot control the life of others. Story one, head on the mirror. It was already 7.45 p.m. and I was alone in the house because my dad took my mom out for a quote unquote date. My older sister was still not home, which I found a bit unusual since she was always home around 6 to 6.30. My eldest sister won't be home until 11 or 11.30 since she gets out of work at that time. Since I was alone, I watched a movie while waiting for everyone to come home. I first prepared myself a, a little dinner so I would have something to eat. I switched on the DVD player and put in a movie. Halfway through it, however, I suddenly got bored so I switched off the system and read The True Philippine Ghost Stories, a popular horror book in my country. While listening to music from my MP3 with an earphone plugged in one ear so I won't have any difficulties in hearing anything. My sister arrived a few moments later and I felt relieved for some reason that there's somebody I'm with already. After seeing me on the couch, she asked me, where's mom and dad? I glanced at her from behind the book and said, they went out. Okay, well I'll be upstairs if you need me. You wait for mom and dad to come home, clear? I simply replied, okay. I'll be upstairs. Whatever, I replied. I was sitting on the sofa beside the mirror that reflects the door. Every time I looked in the mirror's direction, I got this weird feeling as if somebody was looking back at me. I just shrugged it off, thinking I was becoming too paranoid, reading too many scary stories, and playing too many horror games. It was around 8.05 when strange things began happening. I heard a knock on the door. Maybe mom and dad were home already. So I stood up and walked to the front door. When I was several steps away, I heard a loud bang, as if somebody was forcing themselves into the house. I backed away a few steps from the door and grabbed the broom. I slowly approached the door and quickly opened it, expecting something to jump at me, but I saw nothing. I stuck my head outside and looked around, but I didn't see or feel anything except for the slight gust of wind that slowly brushed through my face. I went inside and closed the door, laughing at myself for being too paranoid, but I swore I heard somebody knock. That surely wasn't my imagination. How could my imagination explain that loud bang I just heard? Thinking I'm really just paranoid, I continued reading while listening to music. After 10 minutes or so, the knocking sounded again, but this time I had a feeling of being annoyed and at the same time fear the knocking went on for a few more minutes until it finally stopped i phoned my best friend who is a bit of a psychic and told him there's something strange going on and that i always get a weird feeling whenever i look into the mirror he asked you can feel it too after a moment of silence i asked him feel what and after another moment of silence he told me something that made me feel even more uncomfortable. He told me that when he first visited my house, he saw long strands of hair scattered on the floor by the front door and a feeling of uneasiness wrapped himself. After hearing this, I told him it isn't funny and I asked him if he was trying to prank me and stated it was a visible attempt to scare me, to which he replied, no. Then he apologized for scaring me. I told him it's okay and I'll see him tomorrow before I said goodbye and hung up. I just continued reading, this time hoping nothing interrupts me. I stood up and went to the kitchen for a glass of water and went back to the living room. Just as I was about to pick up the book from the coffee table, something caught my eye in the doorway of the kitchen. It seemed like a shadow. I looked at the doorway for a few moments and then called out, Hey sis, are you there? but got nothing as a response. I was trying to get all the weird feelings off me, but I just couldn't help but look at the mirror every time I get the urge to do so. 
After looking at the mirror for a few more times, I looked at the mirror another time, and what I saw made my hair on the back of my neck stand. It was a human head, partially covered in hair. I rubbed my eyes thinking I was just playing off. I was wrong. It was absolutely real. The feeling is becoming even more uneasy at every passing minute. I ignore the fact that there is something really scary that will haunt my dreams. When I gather the courage to look into the mirror for the last time, it is a decision I regret it deeply. The face is right in front of the mirror already, as if it's trying to get out of it. The face is something that would traumatize any child. It smiled at me. I saw its pale face with streaks of blood on it. The sight of this horrible entity made me sweat in fear, and then I passed out. I woke up around 10.30. The horrors I experienced haven't, haven't left me. Through the corner of my eye, I can see the head is still there, staring at me. I heard my mom's voice call on the front door. I rushed to the door, tripping like an idiot. When they were inside already, I joined them in the kitchen and asked my mom how their day went. My mom said happily, Oh, it's the best date I've ever had, while looking at my dad, who was smiling at her. A few minutes later, I told her all about what happened, but I haven't told her that the ghost still hasn't left its place. The moment I told my mom about the head that was on the mirror, the smile on her face disappeared, and it was replaced with a worried expression as she looked at my dad. What's wrong? I said. Oh, nothing... It's just... Just what? My mom told me that when we moved here, the mirror was already here. She found the mirror nicely decorated and it looked good for furniture, so she kept it instead of selling it. Like the way I did, she experienced weird happenings when she was home alone. Like a shadow lurking around. She once saw a man that stood behind her when she was alone in the house, but she just tried to ignore them, hoping it would go away. A year has passed, but that horrifying experience I had still hasn't left my mind. About the ghost, whenever I look at the mirror, I can still see the head, never leaving its place. Vengeful child. Yesterday, my daughter told me that she had an imaginary friend. There's nothing strange about that. Lots of young children have imaginary friends. But there's something strange about her imaginary friend. She named her friend Gazelle. What is strange about the naming of her friend? Gazelle is the name I would have given my first baby if my wife and I didn't have to get an abortion. School. I don't really believe in the paranormal, but there was this one time I felt very ill at ease. It happened in September 2012, and my wife and I decided that we should go away for the weekend to see her family in Stoke. So we drove up from our house in Southampton at 5 in the afternoon, and it was just my wife, our three-year-old daughter, and me. As we were on the motorway, we got to see the beautiful English countryside, which made my daughter happy as she was pointing at the livestock, saying, Ha! Look! Cows! There were problems on the motorway as we got closer to Stoke, caused by an accident on the M6 and roadworks, which really put us behind schedule. So my wife called her parents, and she told them that we should get there in the early hours of the morning. So I drove through Stafford just so I could avoid ongoing traffic as it was getting annoying. And at times, I was only moving two feet every five minutes. It was then, one in the morning, with my wife fast asleep in the passenger seat and my daughter asleep in the back. I then suddenly drove past what looked like a school, and then my daughter woke up and said, Daddy, look at those blood-covered and burnt people watching us while eerily smiling at me. I replied with, where? In a terrified and concerned manner due to the fact that my daughter's three and wasn't coherently speaking at the time. She then proceeded, in the school playground, daddy. So out of curiosity and concern, I got out of the car and looked over the fence into the school playground and saw nothing. As I went back to my car, just as I was gonna say something to my daughter, I noticed she was fast asleep. I noticed as well that my car looked like it was about four feet from where I parked it and the handbrake was down. 
which was worrying as there was a steep hill going down another four feet ahead. As I was driving up to my mother and father-in-law's house, I decided to dismiss everything that happened due to exhaustion and stress. I woke up the next morning and decided to get some breakfast for everyone. So as I walked to my car, I noticed there was red childlike handprints all over the rear of my car. The girl who died in our swimming pool, Dakota Holloway, 11 years old, drowned in pool because of a neglect from lifeguard, February 7th, 1999. Mark, did you hear? What? Mark, you didn't hear? Cindy was saying she's been hearing splashes in the pool and kids laughing when she closed last night. She's freaked, man. She thinks she may be the one this year. Mark was his usual self, trying to get me into believing his story about how the city pool is haunted. The one lifeguard supposedly chosen to die every year, according to Greendale Community Legend. I've heard it a million times. It's because some girl drowned in this pool. What a load of crap. I've personally never seen a ghost in my life. Mark. The curse always continues, my friend. Well, my curse is it's Friday night and I'm once again assigned to the closing shift with Mark by our supervisor, Simon. It's the sixth time this month. Maybe instead of a lifeguard, my job title should be pool closer. The reason for me was simple. I'm the new guy. The reason for Mark? Simon didn't like him. Mark, I'm going to turn off the chlorine. You grab all the toys and flutter boards and put them in storage. You got it? Again, Mark gets the easy job of turning a switch, which is classified as one of the most important duties of closing because if you're not careful, you can burn out somebody's eyes with a chlorine overdose the next morning. And I get the easy job hunting down 40 or so floating pieces of rubber and putting them into a bin every freaking night. And I've yet to see a ghost. If there's truly a ghost, do you think you can help me out? So, what did I say about killing lifeguards? The thing is, since the 2000s, Greendale Community Center has had this urban legend that one lifeguard is cursed every year with being involved in some tragic accident, whether it be a suicide, a fatal car crash, or insanity. Something just real bad, real tragic. And that all due to coming in contact with the girl that died in her swimming pool and being chosen by her to die. Typical campfire stories. Well, I don't believe it. Besides not believing in ghosts, Mark's been with this place for almost two years. Cindy's been here three summers as well, and Simon's a total jerk. If anyone should die, it should be him. Not to poke holes in a perfectly fine urban legend, but sad stuff happens all the time. To everybody, really. There's about 25 to 30 lifeguards employed here every year. 70 to 80 if you count the ones that are volunteering to get their license. Out of all those people, you're telling me nothing bad is going to happen to any one of them? There's bound to be like one or two. That's just statistics. Anyway, it was getting close to 8 and I wanted to go home. I walked over to the edge of the pool and started picking everything up. I was almost done when I suddenly heard something. (laughs) I looked around. Nothing but the vast, empty pool area. I kneeled to pick up a giant floating giraffe and I heard it again. (laughs) This time I freaked out. It was right next to my ear. I looked around hurriedly. Nothing. Could it be my... Hey! Oh, I... Jesus, I jumped. It was just idiot Mark. Mark, are you almost done, man? Seriously, dude, I have some closing paperwork. You clean out the locker room with a mop and don't take your time. I want to get out of here by nine. Sweeping the locker room was just my favorite job. There was just something therapeutic about a menial job you really didn't have to think about. Just mop, sweep, scrub, repeat. You ponder on life and exactly what got you into the situation it's a nice quiet moment for me until mark shows up usually to tell me to hurry up well i wait what's that a splashing sound in the pool what what the i ran out of the locker room and looked at the swimming pool 
At first I saw nothing, but then I saw a shape slowly forming at the deep end. It was a dark shadow rising from the water underneath. My instincts suddenly kicked in and I lunged into the water. As I approached the black form, I paused. It was a little girl. Her face was in the water. How long has she been there? I got closer and tried to touch her, but as my hand was about to make contact, her face looked up at me. I froze in horror. The little girl in front of me had a completely white face. As if blood has been drained from her face, she had a corpse face and saggy skin as if she'd been swimming it for hours. She looked like an old woman with a child's body. Purple veins spread across her cheeks visibly as if she'd been suffocating for hours. But then the most disturbing part was what will make me lose sleep for the rest of my life was that her eyes were all black like buttons she had no cornea no pupils just plain black eyes staring back at you coldly then her mouth began to open so wide it filled half of her face as she began howling a screeching sound so loud i jumped out of my skin and swam back to the ledge i ran for the locker room but the door was jammed i used all my might and pulled on it but it would not budge the girl's screaming continued throughout the whole pool I started screaming for Mark, but nothing. Then, as I began to listen carefully, I realized the girl wasn't screaming. She was crying. I looked back at her, and she was now right in front of me. Her loud howl was replaced by a sobbing sound. As I sat there, stunned and motionless, looking at her, with her hands covering her face as her crying became more gentle, and more and more, she resembled just a sad, lonely little girl. I put my hand on her shoulder, this time making contact. Then she stopped crying. She put her hand away from her face and looked up at me. She smiled. Young lifeguard found dead in Greendale Community Center. Cause of death? Drowning. No signs of struggle or other motives. Has been deemed by police. Suicide. February 7th. 2015. Can you help me find my cat? I was out one night in December around midnight. It was terribly cold, being the day after Christmas. I sighed deeply, almost amused at seeing my breath. I was tired walking home from my friend Ricky's house. We just got done eating a ton of snack food and playing Pokemon, battling over and over like when we were kids. How I miss those days. I'm 17 now, and kind of a nerd. I don't have a lot of friends, but I cherish the ones I do have. I don't have a girlfriend, but I do have a crush or two. Anyway, I love taking walks at night. It was so quiet and peaceful. I also really love the cold air caressing my cheeks and fingers. I sighed again, almost home, just a block away with my house, where I lived with my mom and two bratty younger sisters of 15 and 10. Part of me didn't want to go home, worried mom would catch me up late and scold me for being out alone. Suddenly, I saw her. She was pretty, kind of short, but not a child. She had wavy blonde hair and was wearing satin pants and a light blue tank top. As I got closer, I could see her face. Her pale skin was almost white as snow with piercing green eyes. Her lips and fingers were blue. She looked very sad and very cold. I imagine it was because she was barefoot and had nothing on her arms. As I got about three feet away from her, she took a step towards me and said in a chilling, soft, yet raspy voice, Can you help me find my cat? I shrugged and tried to smile. Sure, uh, where do you think he is? She pointed to a truck parked in the driveway. I nodded and walked with her to the car. Before walking around it, I took off my jacket and offered it to her. Here, you're going to freeze to death. She smiled sadly, looking up at me. After a short pause, she whispered, I already have. By then, I was getting freaked out by her. I didn't believe in ghosts or anything, plus I could see her breathing. I put my jacket around her shoulders, and for some reason, I was relieved when it stayed there. I made my way around the car. Sure enough, there was a kitten underneath. I reached in and pulled him out, 
To his surprise, he must have been focusing on her. He purred my arms and eagerly jumped to the girl when he saw her. She smiled at me, joyful tears now cascading down her snowy beige skin. She grinned wide and scratched the cat's ears. Thank you so much. I smiled back, glad she was happy. She turned to walk and it was in the direction I was heading in. So I made conversation after a moment, briefly reaching over to pet the kitten. We talked about the weather, work, music, and the like. She was 17, named Hannah. She was out for a long time looking for a cat, freezing in the cruel December air. Of course, our talk was short-lived since I was close to home. Jack, she said. Thank you so much for helping me, she grinned. Of course, I said, blushing. She reached over and kissed my cheek. Her blue lips were like ice on my numb face. I shivered at the touch, though flattered that she did such a thing. I went to stammer a reply, but she had turned. Her words echoed in my head, and then I realized something. Wait, I didn't tell you my name. How did you... I asked, watching her walk away. She turned to look at me, smiled, and then vanished. Can we play? When I was really little, I dreamed I was playing with this other girl about my age, six or seven. We were playing with her Barbies, and she was really just having fun. I noticed she was extremely pale. She had a small, pouty face with blonde, straight hair. She looked as though she had been playing outside. Her face was covered in dirt. She also seemed very reserved and timid. I remember giving her a really large smile as we stopped playing for a moment. As I did so, I watched her own smile disappear, and she lowered her head. I asked her what was wrong. You know we can't ever play together again, right? I remember I felt really sad, and I promised her I would come back. But she just looked at me and said, But I'm dead. You can't. Before I could protest, I woke up in the middle of the night. I looked around the dark room, only hearing my little brother's deep, breaths from the bed across from mine so I went back to sleep not thinking too much about it many years later when I was about 10 I had a very familiar dream I was standing in her house I remember going by a reclining chair with a man as pale as her fast asleep he had been watching the television I think but now all that played was the snow and the harsh sound of its feedback having silently slipped by him I then made my way through the dark rooms calling her name I can never remember when I was awake, in a voice that was barely above a whisper. Finally, I came to a room with no door. I peered inside, and there she was, still playing with the same dolls as before. She looked as though she hasn't moved from the spot since last time. Even her appearance was the same. I ran up to her, very excited to finally be able to see my friend once more. In my excitement, I grabbed and hugged her. This is my first time touching her, and I remember that she was very cold. She felt like ice, but her body was stiff. When I pulled away, she just looked up at me. Her face contorted in a mixed expression of shock and confusion. I expected her to be as happy to see me, so what she said really freaked me out. You're not supposed to be here. She wasn't hateful in her tone. Rather, she seemed frightened for me. I shrugged it off and told her I missed her, and I had finally come back to play. She shook her head, no, very vigorously, and I was becoming frightened. You can't be here. You can't come more than once. If they find out you're here, you won't be able to leave, and they won't let you leave. I was really frightened by her words, and they made me want to cry. I very softly asked her who they were and why I couldn't leave. She told me the others that lived in the house. She said they would be mad that I'm here. And then she said something that has truly haunted me all these years. She said, you will be stuck here just like me. I wanted to leave. I asked her how I could leave and where the door was, but she told me I couldn't leave like that. She said she had to hide me until I woke up. I don't remember where I was hiding, but I remember she chose to hide with me. She told me they were all mean to her, and I was the nicest person she had met since she's got to stay there. She said she wanted me to stay, but that she didn't want me to be sad. 
What felt like hours passed by until the man in the chair could be heard stirring. He got up and I noticed he didn't touch the floor so much. Rather, he glided as he made motions of walking. I don't recall how the events unfolded, but as he went looking for her, we both became scared. We decided to move from there to another room. She said that we had to hide in the bathroom. It was the only door with a lock. I agreed with her, and we began to make our way down the hall. As fate would have it, we stumbled upon another person inhabiting the house. She motioned for me to be quiet as he had his hands covering his face. I could hear him crying very loudly, and though she said to be quiet, I ventured to console him. As my first words escaped my mouth, his cries stopped. The hall became deadly silent, and the girl began to frantically tug on my shirt. He uncovered his face as she pulled me further down the hall, but I continued to look at him for a short time. He looked at us with those, those eyeless holes, and his scream and the way his mouth opened were unbelievable. It looked as though his jaw became unlatched and the how he let out sounded of pure hatred and anger. I was terrified. She grabbed my hand and we began to run. We made our way down the narrow hallway, and as we did, the screams of all the others who stayed there filled the house. They were all chasing us now. We finally reached the door. She shoved me in and quickly entered herself. She then proceeded to lock the door. We could hear them all yelling and screeching from behind the door. And then it grew silent. For a moment, I felt relief wash over me. They were going to leave us be. But then I turned to face her and her eyes told a different story. There was this look of irrational fear on her face as she watched over the door. I now knew this wasn't over. That's when the banging began. It was hard and very precise, each thud rattling the door with its strength. Give me the girl! It was the voice of a man. He seemed very angry, and from the way she squeezed my hand when he spoke, I knew she was afraid of him. The banging in that one phrase continued on. After what felt like a few minutes, the thud stopped. I was too afraid to grant myself a moment of false security, and I was right to do so. He began to ram his shoulder into the door, now screaming that he wanted me. I'm not sure how, but I knew this was the man in front of the television. The door began to give way, and I became increasingly frightened. That's when she did something I would never forget. She came to kneel in front of me and pleaded for me to wake up. She said she couldn't let him have me. Her hands grasped my shoulders tightly as tears welled up in my eyes. That's when the door finally broke open. She grabbed me, wrapping me in her arms, and began to hold me super tight, as tight as she could, and I began to scream for my life. It is then that I finally woke up. I woke myself up with my screaming. At first, everything was black, and so I didn't stop screaming. It wasn't until I realized I was in my bed and actually opened my eyes that I stopped. Above my face was my dad's, and from the look on it, it seemed he was scared. He said that I had been screaming for a while, but he couldn't wake me up. He said he had poked and shaken me, but I wouldn't open my eyes. I wouldn't stop screaming. Yes, if I had a nightmare, but I told him I had a dream that I've had once before. I said I dreamed that I went to play with a friend, but her family didn't like me. To this day, I had never dreamed of the girl or her house again. I know it's a little choppy and vague, but it's been 10 years since I had these dreams. I recently began thinking of the little girl and everything that happened. It truly scared me, and so I thought to share it with others. And those are all of the creepypasta stories we had for today. I hope everybody had a super safe and fun Halloween, if you celebrate that. And we have a subscriber shout out for today. And this is the subscriber shout out. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support. And for everybody else, make sure you're subscribed for a chance to be featured in next week's video. And I will see you all next time.